Welcome back to Water Matters, the show about Long Island's water. My guest today is the outspoken, no stranger to controversy, Dick Amper, Executive Director of the Pine Barren Society. So, Dick, tell me, what are, what are you guys working on these days? Well, we're all working on water quality. Mm -hmm. So, there are three things we think need to be done. Um, and this is being done under a program called the um, Long Island Nitrogen Action Plan. And what we need to do is to look at all of the sub-watersheds, the individual. We're not all the same. It's not, one size doesn't fit all on Long Island. They're mm -hmm. different. They're big ones. They're small ones. They're ones that have flushing action. They're ones that don't. How many so, are we talking? How oh, many sub-watersheds uh, are there that's on Long the, That's the issue. We don't know, but we think Hundreds. more than 100. Mm -hmm. More than 100. Mm -hmm. And um, once we've identified those and we measure the loading of nitrogen, and uh, most of your viewers probably know by now, this nitrogen is coming principally from wastewater, that is our own sewage, mm -hmm. or from fertilizers. Those are the principal sources of nitrogen. That they're what is getting into water, and they're what are call, causing har harmful algae blooms, for example, and the mm -hmm. fish kills and the turtle kills that we've witnessed as a result of the proliferation oh, what of happened this algae. In the, in the, in the just, this last but it's happening uh, everywhere. We're closing mm -hmm. shellfish beds. We're closing beaches. Um, this is something that hasn't historically happened on Long Island. But if we can reduce nitrogen, and by the way, there are cases where we have gone in and taken nitrogen control action, and these ecosystems have bounced back. So once we've measured, A, a identified these uh, uh, individual watersheds, and then B, said how much nitrogen are they facing now, then it's possible for us to put in place a regulatory system that says, if you've got a lot, well, then you're going to have to cut back in the, uh, in the future. Well, how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. In Suffolk County, for example, there are more than 350,000 private homes with individual cesspools or septic systems on them, discharging directly into the groundwater from which we're trying to extract our drinking water and which are influencing our harbors and our bays. So, if we can find superior technology, and it is rushing along to meet the challenge, that re removes nitrogen and help the public re replace the, I want to say, uh, really old, <laughs> 5,000 year old technology mm -hmm. of just dumping the stuff in the ground and then pretending that we don't have to worry about it, if we can get them then to switch over to affordable, we may need some tax credits, some help from government. I mm -hmm. think that's important. But as I observed earlier, mm -hmm. the public is very, very supportive of, uh, of clean water. So I think we can get buy-in from them. But if we could get that cleaned up, if we could build sewage treatment plants where they're needed to deal with existing problems and not where they're going to create a demand for new development and mm -hmm. more problems of uh, overdevelopment and all of that brings both economically and environmentally, um, then I think we turn that around mm -hmm. and that Long Island may be the first mature suburb that faces this problem. We were the first, we are the first in the nation federally designated sole source aquifer where the federal government, the EPA said, you depend exclusively for your water from the ground. We may be the first in the country that actually turns that around, threatened by the destruction of our aquifer system, and that we can restore it simply by eliminating mm -hmm. the problem that created it in the first place. We, we need to be the first. Uh, it's not a matter of maybe. I mean, if we don't get uh, the nitrogen out of our groundwater, we'll lose all our rivers, creeks, bays, everything. Or well, everything that people actually leave it. You know, they're paying two and a half times the national average in taxes, and still they love the place. And when you ask them why, it's because of the bays and the beaches and the fishing and the recreational, the boating opportunities. And so much of everybody's economy and environment is dependent upon clean water. So we're not going to be the place that, that we mean to be if we don't reverse this problem. And look, we have addressed it before. No one thought that we could uh, draw a circle around the Pine Barrens and, and save mm. 100,000 acres from continued increased development. And 
Yet we did that, and mm -hmm. we have the will to do it. The public is squarely behind it. I'm hearing from federal, state, county, and town officials. Instead of saying, eh, aren't you exaggerating this situation? I think they're facing it down and saying yes. And even in the past, right. well, you've heard this. You go to them and they say, well, yes, that's true, but the state has to know the federal government and there's finger. That isn't happening. Every level of government is saying, yes, there's a role for everybody to play. Uh -huh. And that is encouraging to me. I've been doing this stuff now for more than 25 years, and I've never seen such unanimity among people in and out of government, in and out of business, saying, if we don't solve this problem, we're goners. Mm -hmm. And the people who need to develop this technology are moving swiftly at Stony Brook University and elsewhere. That's like they are moving. Tech Center. They yes. ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they move, you know, industry, this is a capitalist country here. People are going to say, whoa, there are people all across the country that are going to need this technology. Oh, yeah. we're, we're, take, so, we're, we're taking the, the problem and, and uh, making it an opportunity. If we can develop this technology sufficiently, there's lots of other places that need it. Marshall, that's absolutely right. So economically or environmentally, it's a win-win situation. So I'm Way more optimistic <laughs> than I was when we started the uh, the Pine Barrens campaign back in 1989. Uh -huh. I wondered whether we were going to get it done. Mm -hmm. I don't have any doubt but that we're going to mm -hmm. get this one done because we have to. You know, st starting in uh, early uh, two th 2014, there were all these uh, uh, public meetings. Everybody was kind of looking at each other saying, how did this happen? How did we all get on? It was the science. They all looked at the science and said, we need to cooperate. We need to come up with a comprehensive plan among all these different uh, uh, levels of government and all these uh, different policymakers and the business community to really make this happen. And I think they also came up with another notion, and that is, how could it not happen? How right. could you put three million people on a relatively small island and say you may discharge your <laughs> wastewater into the source of your drinking water? <laughs> Why did it take that long to get caught up in the first place? If, if Nassau and Suffolk were its own country, it would be the fourth most densely populated in the world. Yet we have 500,000 holes in the ground where uh, our waste ends up. So that's primitive. All right, so we're not looking back. We're right. looking forward. Right. And there are a lot of uh, different groups and a lot of different projects, a lot of different levels of government mm -hmm. that are invested in this. Uh, the money that's come from the federal government uh, post Sandy mm -hmm. has been staggering. We're close to a billion dollars that's already been injected into this campaign. The states invested in this campaign. Uh, the counties are both active. Um, County Executive Ballone has made this his top priority. This is uh, Kudos number to one. Him. And town after town, even villages now are saying, what can we do on a local level? Because there's just nobody mm -hmm. out there saying it's an overblown uh, threat. And there's nobody who's saying that we either can't or shouldn't do it. No, in, indeed. Um, it's, it's going to take uh, a, a real, it's going to take everybody, a real uh, collective will. The good news is uh, the press, Newsday, I think, has been really terrific in getting this issue out, for instance, the, the local papers. Um, News 12 has done feature after feature. They're covering the, the stories. What I like, News 12 has been doing features during the summer where they actually tell you which beaches are closed because of this problem. Right. And that's bringing it right home. You're all ready to pack up for a yeah. beach trip, and you realize it's been closed because we haven't been taking care of the water. Right. Heavy rain, beach closures. It's like that's what happens. That's what follows these yep. days. But we're, we're going to turn that around.